Hello, everybody. Um, for Sue, I was wondering if you could talk about how it was for you when you moved from being a voice actress to being a voice director. You mentioned um, how, how hard it was to become a director, and I'm just wondering what the transition was like for you, especially in terms of then working with people who you had been a member of cast with, and then also for Greg. What was it like being directed by somebody who you worked with as a member of cast? Oh, I can't wait to weigh in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was uh, a, a little tentative. I knew I had to be very confident. I had worked with these guys. I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat. <laughs> I quit laughing in my throat. <laughs> but I, what was so terrific for me was being able to, because I, I am an actor, and I come from that actor's standpoint, and I have such respect for actors. And a lot of directors in animation are not actors, and yet they're terrific directors, but I felt that I was going in with, with uh, kind of a win situation because I was an actor, they knew I was an actor, and they knew I had great respect for, for them. And they, in turn, were so good to me because they were rooting for me to be a good director. So they allowed me the playground and the arena for me to just let my, let my growth as a director uh, begin. And um, I, I can't tell you you know how great it was for me to because I had to give up a lot of voices. I had to give up a lot of being able to voice other characters then because a lot of the directors, you know, went, okay, well she's a director now, so you know, I'm not gonna hire her as an actor. Which was fine. I, I, I realized that and I had to make that that uh, transition into that. But it was glorious for me. I would have voiced an opinion on this whether you had asked or not. Uh, Sue Sue never, she had so much respect of every actor working anyway. Uh, the given was she would never ask anything of an actor that she wasn't capable of doing already. So, so she, she had the respect of every actor in the room. She also had enough energy uh, to, to, she had as much energy as she would ask of any actor in the room. It was, it was, <laughs> It, it was a win-win. If -win. you, you, there are actors who are actors direct. There are directors who are actors directors. There are directors who are totally technically proficient, but have a difficulty communicating to actors. She was a director who was fully capable in both arenas. So uh, there, there. A lot of times, there's a sense of humor in in the green rooms and the waiting rooms. That's as much a part of, of going to sessions as anything else. It's, it's what you really love about your career, is just that everybody gets the same joke. Um, there's, there's this wonderful just sense of camaraderie. Well, she was part of that world, and she was part of the world on the other side of the glass as well. So it, 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 was, a, it was a perfect, every Sue Blue session is a perfect world where she gets the joke on both sides of the glass. She can ask anything of an actor, and an actor will bend over backwards to provide it. And, and uh, she, she's totally proficient on the directing side, technically as well. So it, it's, it's, it's always a dream. Thank you. Can you marry me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, Mrs. Grimlock! <laughs> You're just as good a director as you are in, in hiring the, the cast of characters. You know, to have somebody like Greg Berger in my cast, it was, there's nothing I had to do. I just let him do it because he's, so, you know, I like to cast the party too. I mean, Greg was talking about enjoyment and, and laughter in the green room and all of that. I love to laugh. And it's great when we would all get together and, and do an ensemble reading and an ensemble recording because we would just laugh. It's supposed to be a party. It's supposed to be a party, exactly. <laughs>